eyes and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of Christ my Savior. Good morning. Today is Sunday. Sunday is the first day of the week. So let us remember why we're here. We're here to please the Lord. We're here to learn what it takes to stay in good graces with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus. And we are here because it is also a commandment from Jesus to come here on the first day of the week. When we talk about Jesus, everything that we do is really all about Jesus. Everything in this world should all be all about Jesus. Listen to the words in a song that was written to the Lord by a man. A man that the Lord said was a man after his own heart. We find in Psalms 28 these writings. Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock, be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands towards thy holy oracles. Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endurance. Give them after the weak of their hands. Render to them their desert. Because they regret not the works, because they regard not the works of the Lord are the operation of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoice. With my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people, and bless thy inheritance. Feed them always, and lift them up forever. David David called the Lord his rock, and the Lord, who is David always put his trust into, as we see in different psalms and different writings of David, David understood that without the Lord on his side, his enemies would destroy him. And he also understood that the Lord will always give a reward according to the deeds of man and according to the wickedness of their actions. David understood that the Lord will pay them for their works with their hands and render them their just deserts. Now hear the warning from David in verse 5. And take this to heart. Because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands, he shall destroy them and not build them up. In Psalms 18, David sang unto the Lord, after the Lord delivered David from the hands of his enemies and from Saul. David sang to the Lord in verse 1. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. David trusted in the Lord. And when David did sin... And it was pointed out to him that he sinned. David would repent. He would cry out unto the Lord because he did not want to disappoint his Lord. He would always have trust in God. David would sing, For who is God, save the Lord? Or who who is a rock, save our God? You know, Moses tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 4, that God... He is the rock, his work is perfect for all his ways or judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. We know today that Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock that the church is built upon. 
the rock that this church, the church of Jesus, is built upon is the rock of salvation. We knew that nothing has changed us and that Jesus the Christ is the Son of God and only through Jesus, who is a Christ, can one be saved. Can one be saved from death and hell's fire? <clears throat> it is written, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. When we read about Jesus in the Old Testament, we read about Jesus in the New Testament, we see that Jesus was their rock and salvation just as Jesus is our rock and our salvation today. And he will be forevermore. Jesus is Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. For Jesus was here in the beginning, and we know this from the Gospel account as told to us by St. John, in John chapter 1, verse 1 through 3, as it is written, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were created by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. We also find in the book of Acts, chapter 1, in verse 9 through 11. And when he had spoken these things, while behold, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight, and while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into the heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall come in the like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Jesus was here in the beginning. Jesus walked this earth to show us the way. Jesus is now on the right hand of God in heaven, and Jesus will return for us one day. Why do we know this? <clears throat> and Peter, an inspired writer of God, also tells us in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 22. He says, Peter tells us this about Jesus, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authority and power be made subject unto him. We find it written in the gospel account, according to St. Matthew, chapter 16. And this is an insight. And this is also gives us an ideal about why Jesus is the rock and Jesus is the cornerstone of the church. And this was the first time that the apostles had an insight to this. And we find this in Matthew 16, starting with verse 13. It says, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philip, he asked, <coughs> Philippia, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say Eliza, others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Baljona, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the cornerstone of the church, and all power is given unto Jesus. And we know this because in the gospel account also, according to St. Matthew in chapter 28, it is written, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. The problem today, though, is because of many people's ignorance, or because of lack of study, or combination of both, because they listen to false prophets, false teachers, many claim that Peter is that rock that Jesus was speaking of. But that is not what Jesus was saying. We understand from the scripture that Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the cornerstone of the church. In Ephesians chapter 2, it is written, For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, 
but fellow citizens with the saints and with the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, and whom all the building fit framed together groweth into a holy temple and the Lord, and whom ye also are built together in an habitation of God through the Spirit. You see, Jesus is the cornerstone. Jesus is the rock. All through the scripture, all through the Bible, we can see this. We are all connected together as one. One because of Jesus. Now think about that. We are connected together to God through what? Through the blood of Christ. Jesus gave the authority to the apostles, as we saw. He gave them authority because he gave them the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus told them that whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. And we understand that everything that the apostles bound on this earth and everything they loosed on this earth is in compliance with the will of Jesus, which is the will of God. They didn't do anything on their own, but Jesus gave them the authority. That's why the book of Acts is called the uh, Acts of the Apostles, because that is what the church was built on. The fact of the matter is this. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Son of the living God. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Savior of all mankind. It is Jesus who sacrificed all to save us from sin. It is Jesus who had no iniquities. Jesus is the only man to ever walk this earth with no iniquity, no wickedness, no injustice. Jesus was the only man to walk this earth that had no sin against God. Only the blood of Jesus could save Peter. You see, only the blood of Jesus can save mankind, including Peter. Peter was a man who, as David was a man, also sinned. But Peter and David had the one thing in common. When they sinned, when they went against the Lord, and they realized what they did, they repented, and they came back to the Lord. We find it written also in the gospel message, as recorded by St. Matthew in chapter 16, verse 21. <clears throat> it says, From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he might go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Who was teaching? Jesus. Who was learning? The apostles. Okay? Jesus is my rock. Jesus is my fortress. And Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus is my strength in whom I will trust. He's my buckler. And the horn of my salvation. Jesus is my high tower. I will call upon the name of my Lord Jesus, who is my Savior, who is worthy to be praised, and who shall save me from my enemies, because I trust in Jesus. The church, the Lord's church, is built upon the one who had no sin, and the one who can deliver us from death and from sin. And from this evil world. And only Jesus has that power to do that. Was David calling a mere man his rock? You know? Think about that. Did David sing, I will love thee, Peter? My strength? Did David say, Peter is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer? We know this is not true. You see, so many people, because they don't study things out, are so easily misled. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the rock. And we are baptized in the name of Jesus. Peter, in Acts chapter 2, verse 36, he tells the world to this day, Therefore, 
Let all the house of Israel know surely that God had made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. He didn't say, hey, he made me. No, he said, Jesus is Lord and Christ. Paul, an inspired writer. Paul, an apostle of Jesus, who's an apostle on this side of the cross. Turn with me to the book of Romans. In Romans chapter 1, Paul tells all who have ears, he tells us to us this day, in verse, starting with verse 1, <clears throat> he says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scripture, concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also called of Jesus Christ. We are called to Jesus not to Peter. Peter himself would never have let anyone say that. Peter would never have let anyone say he was the rock. He would have never let anyone worship him. He would have never said he was the cornerstone of the Lord's church. Peter was way too humble of a man to do that. Let's turn also to a writing in 2 Timothy, if you would. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And again, these are instructions from an inspired writer. And these were written to the evangelist Timothy. But they are written for us today as well. So we know who Jesus is. And we understand how we should be living our life. And he tells us in chapter 2 starting with verse 1. Thou therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses... The same committeth thou to be faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endureth hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So, if Peter was the rock of the church, wouldn't he be telling him to be strong in Peter? But he's not. He's telling him to be strong in Jesus Christ. These are things, folks, that we need to make sure we understand. Because we need to have the knowledge of who Jesus really is as people try to diminish him. God made Jesus to be sin for us. One of the things in your mind that sometimes we don't think about, we say, well, God made Jesus to be sin for us, but you know what? Jesus had to agree to that. That is the beauty of the love of Jesus. He agreed to us because Jesus was made to be sin for the sinners so everyone on this earth would have an opportunity to be free from sin. And Jesus agreed to do that. <clears throat> Jesus knew no sin. Jesus was the one that defeated Satan. Only Jesus gave, never gave in. Only Jesus, who walked this earth as a man, never gave in to temptation. Jesus defeated death and sin so that we might live. Think about that. Jesus was sacrificed so that we might be made righteousness in the eyes of God. That's just really hard to understand in my brain sometimes. But think about that. The one who had no sin, the one who was pure righteousness, went to that cross and was sacrificed so that I could be righteousness in the eyes of God. See, Peter couldn't do that. There's no man that ever walked this earth, including Abraham and Moses, David. They could have never done this. We all have to come to the knowledge that through Jesus, we might be made righteous of God, but we have to be a servant of Jesus. We have to put our trust in Jesus. We find this in Romans chapter 8, verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. How do we have the Spirit of God in us? Through the blood of Christ. 
We don't have to have the blood, the Spirit of God in us if we don't have, if we are not covered by the blood of Christ. Okay? When you come up out of that water, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that is why God sees righteousness in us, because of the gift of the Holy Spirit, because of the blood of Christ. Too many in this world today will not give Jesus the credit for saving this world. Too many people in this world today will not come to the fact, will not come to the knowledge that without Jesus you're not going to get out of this world alive. Too many people today say this is a new age. It's a new time. We have other ways that we can go to heaven. Surely God understands there's more than one way. Look at all the different religions on this earth. The Bible is clear. The Bible is clear in Ephesians chapter 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as you're called and one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. That has not changed. That has not changed at all. And it will never change. When this world is a fire, this will still be the truth. Amen. <clears throat> For all those who think there's another way, Brother Paul wrote this for us in Galatians, in Galatians chapter 1. He wrote this, now people say, well, he wrote that to the Galatians. No, he wrote this to everyone who starts straying away. In Galatians chapter 1, starting with verse 6, he says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And we say, and we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you that then that ye have received, let him be a curse. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I shall not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. To all those who are going into Mormonism because an angel of the Lord supposedly appeared before John Smith, it may have been an angel, but it was not an angel of Jesus. Paul forewarned us. He knew this. You realize Paul could see into the future. He had visions. He knew what was coming. Why do you think the Bible is written the way it's written? People talk about, oh, the revelation of the Bible and these things are yet to come. Yeah. Paul let us know that there will be people come after him that will deceive you and pull you away. That's what you should be looking for. The end of time is when your heart stops beating. That's the end of your time. Paul did not say what man wanted to hear all the time. You got to understand when you read the writings of Paul and you see the trouble he got into, he did not preach what man wanted to hear. He never preached what tickled man's ears. Paul preached Christ. He preached Jesus. And he taught people what Jesus commanded of us so that we could be pleasing to Jesus, which would be pleasing to God the Father. Paul was a servant of Jesus Christ. Paul was clear. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. We can only preach what is in the Bible. Because the Bible is the true word of God given to us by Jesus Christ. Today's no different. Today's no different. We have people out there perverting the gospel of Christ. We have people out there perverting the word of God. And many people today deny the blood of Christ is the way to be saved. 
They say all we have to do is ask Jesus to come into our heart. Well, that's the first step. I don't disagree, but there's more to it than asking Jesus to be coming in my heart. They say we have to believe. The Bible says believeth, which means there's an action. Believing doesn't get you anywhere. Ask the devil, because I guarantee you he believes more than you because he trembles. We walk by faith, not by sight. Too many people today want to see miracles. They want to see signs. Well, folks, I don't know if you want to see the next sign from God because it's going to be the splitting of the sky. It's going to be the destruction of the world. Are you ready for that? We have many who seek out not the Lord, and they go on the TV, and they become an evangelist, and they become powerful, and they get all kinds of money, and they preach what people want to hear, so they send them more money. But here's the facts of life. I don't care if they got millions and millions and millions of people following them. I don't care if you got a billion people following you. I don't care if you got the whole world following you. I stand with Jesus and what the Bible says. Because I'm not going to heaven with these billions of people because they're not really on their road to heaven. The Bible's very clear. They're on their road to hell. Wake up. Wake up, people. We have one God who sent down one Jesus, who died once on the cross, so that we could be saved. It takes the blood of Jesus to be saved. We find in the Gospel account, as it is written by St. John in chapter 9, in verse 5, Jesus telling all who will hear, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now people say, well, Jesus left the world 2,000 years ago. No. Jesus is still in this world today. And he's still going to be in present in this world as long as his church is in this world. But when Jesus comes back for his church, the doors will shut and Jesus will be gone. Today, Jesus is still life. Today, Jesus is still the life and the light of men who follow him. Today, Jesus is the light of this world, and Jesus tries to shine that lightness into the darkness. But unfortunately, too many in the darkness comprehend it not. And they will not come to that light. And they will not be part of the light that is of Jesus. Today, just as always, as it's been since the beginning of time, God had a plan to save man from death and hell. Today, we have this plan. But you know what's really neat with today's world? We have the complete written plan. We can hold it. We can see it. We can read it. We can study it. It's called the Bible. And they didn't always have the complete written word of Christ. But we have it today. And we know that God has revealed that Jesus is all about salvation. And we have a written guide a guide that helps us get through this world and help us to stay on that narrow path to heaven. But even though the truth is spoken, even though we have the complete words of life, many today will not listen. Many today will not hear it. You know, it reminds me of something that we see in the gospel message. And it's written in John chapter 9, verse 40 through 41. When the Pharisees were always trying to trick Jesus, and is written, and some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, ye should, ye shall have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. You see, we have so many people in the world today that they think they're so learned. Oh, I went to college. I got all these degrees. Or... You know, I'm too smart to follow these things because that's old stuff. That's old things, worshiping a God. How'd this world get here? Have you ever noticed, I mean, if you stop in the morning, take tomorrow morning, watch that sun come up. Every day it comes up in the same spot in the east. Wow. Does man make anything that works the same way every day? Even our computers don't work every day, do they? I mean, when you stop and think about it, how long has that sun been coming up? 
Wow. Thousands and thousands and thousands of years. What has man made that's been lasted thousands and thousands and thousands of years? Sin. <laughs> but that's, that's what I'm saying is we got to really think about these things. You see, today many people are blinded and they don't see. I believe sometimes it's because of greed. I think some preachers, because they found a way to make so much money, build great big buildings and do all these things, the greed has gotten in their way. It could be lust. It could be lust for power. They like that power. You see, every apostle in the Bible, even the angels, would never let man bow down to them. But today, oh, man loves that to be bowed down to. But most of it is just plain laziness. We won't pick up the Bible. We won't read the Bible. We won't check on what people are telling you. You won't verify it. And you're going to be held accountable. Each and every one of us by ourselves will be held accountable. We find it written in the gospel account. as told by St. Matthew chapter 12, 36 and 37. That every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. See, we are held accountable for our own actions. We can't blame it on anyone else. We have to keep our guard up. People are always trying to tear us down. We have to understand that Jesus is still in control if we allow him. Just like David, when he was all surrounded by his enemies, he's put his trust in God. Many are trying to show people a different way. They're trying to show us a different way. But there's only one way, and it's through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus tells us this in the gospel. And this one I'm taking today as it is written by St. Luke in chapter 11, verse 9. <clears throat> he says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. These three words we should keep in our mind. Ask, seek, knock. Jesus tells everyone that asketh will receiveth, and he that seeketh will findeth, and he that knocketh it shall be open. What's he saying? He didn't say ask. He said asketh. That means you've got to keep asking. And then you will receive it, which means he'll give you more fold. And he that seeketh, that doesn't mean, oh, I went out today for about 10 minutes and I was searching for what I thought the Lord wanted me to do. Seeketh means you're seeking your whole life. How are you going to find it if you don't seeketh it? And knocketh? Oh, Jesus went home. I'm leaving. That isn't what he said. Knocketh, knocketh. Keep on knocking on that door as if your very life depended on it. You see, we ask through prayer. We ask through prayer. So we're asking because we're always praying. We should always be in prayer. Seeking. Hey, we're seeking by studying the Bible. By going to Bible studies. By being on the first day of the week, assembled together. We're always seeking. Seeketh. Our whole life we should be seeking the truth and the knowledge of the Lord. Knocking. We're always knocking on that door that leads us to life. We're always trying to be with Jesus. We're trying to make sure we're with Jesus. Knocketh. Knocketh. Don't just walk away. Study. Pray. Worship. Study. Pray. Worship. Study. Pray. Worship. Study. Pray. Worship. That's how we asketh. That's how we seeketh. That's how we knocketh. We find it written in Matthew. The gospel account is told to us by St. Matthew in chapter 7. Starting with verse 13, it is written, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. How many times are we warned in the Bible about deceit, being deceived, about the wolves, about the false prophets? There are so many. They're on that highway to hell. 
easy to find. Don't have to do anything. And many will lead you there. Not hard to do. But we need to be on that highway to heaven. But it's not a highway. It's a pathway. And we need to make sure we're always there. That's why we need to always be asking and seeking. And we need to always be knocking. So we know we're on the right road. The road that leads us to heaven. Jesus also warns us. And this is something many people should take into consideration. Because this is something that I see every day. When people say, well, Jesus knows me. I know. That should scare you. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Oh, can you imagine? All the people, all these years, who thought it wasn't necessary to go under that water and be covered in the blood, who were told and deceived that all they had to do is ask Jesus to come into their heart and be a good guy and you know, put some offering in the money once in a while and a couple times a year, take the Lord's Supper. And they thought they were living their life right because they talked about Jesus all the time. Can you imagine how their soul's going to feel when Jesus says, Depart from me, ye who work iniquity? Those words scare me. i got cold chills right now. They, that scares me. I don't know how you feel. It's not about belief. It's about believeth. For those who believeth will do the commands of Jesus. And yes, we have commands from Jesus to do as a Christian, as a servant. Why do you think we are called servants? Do we not get commands as a servant from our master on things to do? I leave you with this warning as well from Jesus. And it is a warning we should always think about. And people we need to share with so they understand it is written by St. John. It is in the gospel account as told to us by St. John in chapter 10. Jesus left this for all those who have ears to hear. Starting with verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entered not by the door into the shepherd fold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter open, and the sheep hear the voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will not they follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Amen. So the question is a simple question. Well, you know the voice of the Lord Jesus. Are you close enough to Jesus? Are you studying the Bible enough so that when you hear the voice, you will know it is of Jesus? Are you covered in the blood of Christ? You see, we are told in the book of Romans, chapter 6. And this is something, again, to understand. Study it out. Understand. Understand. It goes with John 3, it goes with Acts 2.38, and several other passages in the Bible. In Romans chapter 6, starting with verse 3, it says, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are baptized with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be likeness in his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we shall not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now if he had been dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, Dieth hath no more dominion over him. 
For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto the living God through Jesus Christ our Lord. You are saved by the blood of the Lamb. And it is all about Jesus. You see, he didn't say you are alive through Peter, the apostle. We are alive unto God through Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is our Lord. Amen? The most dreadful words, I truly believe, that those who will not come to Christ, those who have fallen away and will not come back, I truly believe the most dreaded words you are going to ever hear in your existence of your soul is, depart, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I just can't imagine that. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about trusting, obeying, and following Jesus' commands. So let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God should bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Today, now, if you are outside of Christ for any reason, why are you there? If you don't have the blood of the Lamb, do it now. Accept Jesus. If you believe there's a Jesus and you've never been baptized... What is holding you back? Repent. Be immersed in that water. Come up a new creature in Christ. And then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And if you are one who was saved. But you've fallen away. There is nothing. Nothing. That you could do. Or have done. That the blood of Christ won't cover you. So why. Are you not coming back to Christ? Why do you let the devil win by saying you can't come back? Jesus says, you are covered in my blood. Repent. I'm your advocate with the Father. And I will bring you back into the fold. The devil says, nah, nah, he won't. Who do you believe? The father of all lies or the father of all truths?